Hi everyone, Mike Smell here for Simulation TV. In this episode of Simulation in Action, we'll be looking at the verification process for analytical models inside Autodesk BIM 360 Structural Analysis. Tomas Fadula will be joining me remotely to discuss this topic, but before we get started, I'll go ahead and give you a high-level overview of what Tomas is going to demonstrate. This exercise will look at how we verify the structural model and how we adjust the model prior to analysis if problems are encountered. The key learning objectives for this uh, video will be how do we verify the analytical model, the types and er of errors and warnings that we might encounter, and how to adjust the structural model if errors and warnings are encountered. So let's join Tomas in looking at how we can verify our analytical model. Using Autodesk BIM 360, we can conduct structural analysis in the cloud. Before we start analysis in the cloud, the structural model should be verified. Verification of the model before it is uploaded allows engineers to check if it is correct from a structural analysis perspective. With your model in Autodesk Rabbit, you can easily click the Analyze in the Cloud button. After you click the Analyze in the Cloud button, the software starts preparing the model for structural analysis. First of all, before you send your model in the cloud, you need to remember that every project needs to be saved. So let me quickly save my project and rerun analysis. Autodesk 360 Structure Analysis for Revit extracts the analytical model from the project, checks if it has already been uploaded to the cloud, verifies and then uploads the model. Verification ensures that the model being analyzed is correct and the analysis results are accurate. It also prevents uploading models with errors to the Autodesk 360 service. If errors are detected, the analysis is disabled. If analysis is disabled, it requires errors to be fixed in order for analysis to proceed. As you can see, different types of errors can occur which will disable the structure analysis. Let's discuss what some of the errors are and how to solve for them. The model supports are not defined. The material assigned to the element does not have physical assets. Parts of beams or columns overlap. Let me tell you briefly how to fix these errors. First, I'm going to focus on the structural supports. The software detects if a part or the whole of the model is not supported. I'm going to fix this by adding point supports at the bottom of every column. Let's rerun verification. Now the supports seem to be OK. However, another error has appeared. Load cases are not defined. You should remember that it is a mandatory condition to have at least one load case defined in your project. We will do this later on. Also, right now we have two other issues remaining. The structural material is not assigned and some elements of the analytical model overlap. Let's focus on the material issue first. In Revit, when you define a wall or a floor, by default the element material is assigned as by category. It must be changed since all structural elements need to have physical properties such as the Young's module, etc. They are necessary for structural calculations. I'm going to change the material to concrete. The next issue is related to the geometry of the analytical mole. There are two analytical beams overlapping. This can be fixed really quickly using the analytical adjust mode. When the analytical element is selected, the following widgets display. The widgets provide a visualization of their coordinate systems and allow dragging of the node constraint to that axis. With this adjusted analytical model, the structure seems to be almost ready for analysis. 
The last remaining error is a lack of load cases. I'm going to add two of them, one dead load case and one live load case. So let's give it a try once again. As you can see, the software is telling us that there are no loads defined in our load cases. This is a warning. If warnings occur, you can ignore them and send the model for analysis. Or you can view them, fix the model and then restart the analysis. In my case, I'm going to ignore this warning since I will only add the self-weight of the structure to the first load case. As you saw during this show demonstration, the Structure Analysis tool has a great mechanism of verification allowing you to quickly find any mistakes in your structural model and easily eliminate them prior to analysis. Thanks to the verification, the analyzed models are correct and the analysis results are reliable. Thanks for the demonstration, Tomas. So in summary, what Tomas presented to us today is how to verify analytical models, the types of errors and warnings that we might encounter, and how to adjust the structural model to address these errors and warnings. If you have any questions about this episode, feel free to reach out to us at the Sim Squad. Thanks for watching.